In this video, I'll make shellac with different types of alcohol and then compare the differences. We've got some nice looking shellac flakes here, which we'll be dissolving in 190 proof Everclear from the liquor store, some 99% isopropyl alcohol that I found on Amazon, 91% rubbing alcohol from the pharmacy, and the standard denatured alcohol from the hardware store. And after these batches are mixed up, We'll test them side by side on some pieces of pine, walnut, and maple. I ground the flakes just a little bit for the sake of consistency and making the video. I'm going to start off making a two pound cut by using eight ounces of alcohol to two ounces of shellac flakes by weight. I'll try to document the progress of each solution as the flakes dissolve. Then I'll eventually use some of this batch to make a three quarter pound cut, which is what I normally like to use. And I'll keep some of it as a two pound cut and use both cuts for the experiments in this video. After 15 minutes, all of the flakes have settled to the bottom and have glommed together. Although interestingly, the flakes in the 99% isopropyl jar don't really stick together and feel like loose sand once stirred. After 30 minutes, I'm noticing that the isopropyl solutions are dissolving a little bit slower than the rest. And I'm also noticing that the color of the isopropyl solutions are a little more amber, whereas the others are a little more like the color of maple syrup. And also the flakes in the isopropyl alcohols are still not sticking together as much. After an hour, it's increasingly apparent that the isopropyl mixtures are not dissolving as fast. The colors of the isopropyl solutions are still more amber than the Everclear or the denatured alcohol mixtures and the flakes in the denatured alcohol batch are almost dissolved already. By the two hour mark, the Everclear mixture is cloudy, but the flakes are mostly dissolved. The 99% isopropyl mixture still has a ways to go, as does the 91% isopropyl solution, and the flakes in the denatured alcohol are almost completely dissolved at this point. At the three hour mark, all of the solutions are showing about the same color, and if you hold these up to the light, you can see that the Everclear is cloudy, still has a few flakes. The 99% and the 91% still have flakes, but the color is less yellow than it was. And the denatured alcohol is almost translucent. At four and a half hours, the Everclear mixture was still cloudy, and there was still a little bit of sediment in the solution. There are still noticeable flakes floating around in the 99% isopropyl mixture, and it is still cloudy. There are also visible flakes in the 91% isopropyl mixture, but interestingly, this batch is more clear than the 99% isopropyl mixture. And the denatured alcohol solution is pretty much ready to be used at this point, as the mixture is basically translucent already. After 24 hours, all of these solutions could probably be filtered and used just fine. But if you look at these under the light, you can see that they might have a ways to go. So we'll keep it going for a little while and see what happens. You can see here that the Everclear solution is still cloudy, but most of the solids have been dissolved. The 99% isopropyl is also cloudy, and it still has some sediment swirling around in the solution. Although the 91% isopropyl also has a little bit of sediment and is also a bit cloudy, it is still more clear than the 99% batch, which I find interesting. And the denatured alcohol mixture is clear and ready to go. However, I would hold off judgment until after the finishing tests, but at this point it does seem like the denatured alcohol is the superior solvent. After 48 hours, all of the solutions remain cloudy except for the denatured alcohol. So I'm going to pour all of these through a coffee filter and compare them to the denatured alcohol. And with the denatured alcohol on the left, you can see these other batches look about the same as they did before they were filtered. So I got distracted and I wasn't able to work on this for about five days, 
So this is about five days later or a week after the initial mixing. And you can see that the Everclear is still a little bit cloudy, as is the 99%. And the 91% is still a little bit cloudy as well, although not as much as the other two. I then diluted each of the filtered batches into a two pound cut, a one pound cut, and a half pound cut. So I just thought I'd share with you what that looked like here. Before we get into finishing, I'll demonstrate my method of applying each cut of shellac. I pretty much just squirt some shellac on a pad and then cover the surface using circular motions. Then I'll even out the finish by wiping with the grain. And usually I'll try to wait about an hour in between each coat. And that's how I'll be applying each coat of shellac moving forward. And this will be our setup for the finishing tests. I'll be applying the three quarter pound cut batches to the maple boards on the left column and also to the walnut boards in the center. The pine boards on the right column will receive the two pound cut batches of shellac. On the first round of applying finish, I coated the pine boards with six coats of the two pound shellac, which is really more like three sessions of two coats each. Amazingly, each type of finish yielded very similar results. I've never finished pine with shellac before and was surprised at how well it responded and how smooth the coats went on. The maple and the walnut boards only received three coats of three quarter pound cut shellac, mainly because of the raised grain, but I noticed a couple of other interesting things right off the bat. The 99% isopropyl mixture immediately jumped out as being more glossy than the others. And another interesting difference between the 99% and the others is that the 99% hardly raised the grain at all. The 91% isopropyl raised the grain a little bit, and the denatured alcohol and the Everclear both raised the grain quite a bit. And the grain raising, or the lack thereof, is fairly significant in my opinion. And I'll try to show you another point of view here. Maybe you can hear the difference The denatured and the Everclear are notably more rough to the touch. And the isopropyls are quite smooth. The 99% isopropyl barely raises the grain at all. Moving on to the second round of finishing, I put just one coat of two pound cut shellac on the pine without sanding. And at this point they could be considered complete. I could tell no difference between the quality of the finishes, which really amazed me. On the maple and the walnut boards, I sanded the raised grain and applied three more coats of shellac to each board, bringing the total to six coats of shellac. The results were virtually the same as the first round of finishing. The 99% still has more of a glossy sheen, and the denatured and the Everclear mixtures still raise the grain more than the other two isopropyl mixtures. And this is at the end of day one. I was able to get two more coats of the two pound cut shellac onto the pine boards with some light steel wool in between to smooth out the dust nibs. So that brings the total up to nine coats on the pine boards. And with the maple and the walnut, I again sanded the raised grain and then it added three more coats to each piece, after which the grain did not raise anymore. But I did follow up with some light steel wool before adding one more coat at the end of the night. So that makes 10 coats for the maple and the walnut using the three quarter pound cut shellac. And the pine boards now have nine coats of the two pound cut shellac. And really all of these could be considered completed at this point but I thought I'd give you another perspective here and we'll keep going with more coats of shellac tomorrow. Okay, this is the first video of day two and I've already completed one coat of the two pound cut on the pine boards with no sanding. That makes for a total of 10 coats on these pine boards. I didn't have to do any sanding to the maple or the walnut boards either, and I applied six more coats, bringing the total up to 16. 
And maybe you can tell from the video that the sheen on each of the boards is becoming more uniform at this point, although the 99% is still just a little bit more glossy. And that brings us to the third and final day. I was able to get one more coat on these pine boards, and that's about it for these guys. It's a total of 11 coats of the two pound cut shellac, and they could have been considered finished long ago. It's amazing to me that they all look great and are almost indistinguishable from one another. For the maple and the walnut, I put three more coats of the three quarter pound cut shellac on each piece, which brings the total number of coats up to 19. And just before doing that, I used some steel wool and some 600 grit sandpaper to smooth them out. On the last session of the third day, I didn't do anything to the pine boards. But on the maple and the walnut boards, I added three more coats, bringing the total up to 22 coats. And I think you can see that they are looking more and more similar to each other as I increase the amount of coats. Similar to the two pound cut mixtures on the pine boards. I'm very impressed with the 99% isopropyl, um, mostly because of how little it raises the grain, and it also produces a very nice sheen very early on. I also liked working with the Everclear solution because the smell didn't bother me, and I didn't have to worry about using gloves or inhaling the fumes. The 91% performed surprisingly well, and I would have no qualms using it. It's definitely the cheapest of all the solvents here. I'll flip some of these over so you can see where we started. One thing that is for certain at this point is that I'm probably not going to be using denatured alcohol anymore unless something changes with the outcomes of using these other alternatives. I'm also working on another video where I use shellac as a grain filler. And I try to grain fill some pieces of red oak using only shellac. And my solvent of choice for that project is Everclear since I plan on applying a gazillion coats and don't want to deal with the harsh chemicals. But I'll try to continue experimenting with these solvents, and if I reach any more conclusions or have any insights, I'll add them to the video description or share them in the comments.